Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I can't tell you how excited I am to see you on this great day. I believe that God has already earmarked you, your family, and everything that has to do with you for a significant blessing and breakthrough. I feel it in my spirit. I want you to prepare yourself, embrace yourself. This next floor blessing is going to be mind blowing. Do me a favor, hit that share button. Uh, to help me spread this gospel to as many people as we possibly can uh, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Text, uh, call, inbox, or yell down the hallway or downstairs and tell them to gather around the larger screen, the largest device, uh, so that you can enjoy the Lord right here in this virtual space. Look, we're getting ready to go into our worship period. And immediately after that, I'm going to be right back here. I got something I believe you're going to want to hear today. God's going to bless you in a real good way. I'll see you in just a few moments. Today we celebrate the joy of the Lord. How many of you know that the joy of the Lord is our strength? We've been faced with so many trials and tribulations, but we still have joy. The joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. So come on and get up out of your seat where you are and clap your hands and let's give God the praise. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain That's freedom though you captured me I've got joy instead of mourning Oh, there's beauty in my brokenness I've got true love instead of pain I've got joy instead of mourning Cause you give me joy Down deep in my soul In my soul In my soul Down deep in my 
your Bible, your iPad, your iPhone, whatever it is that you have the word of God secured on this day. And I want you to go with me to the gospel according to John chapter number six, John chapter six. And uh, I want to read into your hearing verses uh, 53 through 60. Uh, and then we will jump down to verse number 60. Six. Hear the beginning of the reading of the word of God. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. And whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had eternal life. I will raise him up at the last day, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead, but he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. And many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Verse number 66 says that from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. I want to preach to you from the subject, go ahead and walk. We're good. Uh, I think that might be liberating for you to hear yourself saying that. Would you repeat back after me? Go ahead and walk. We're good. I am aware that you are probably as shocked as everybody in the crowd that gathered to hear the words of Jesus this day. It certainly disturbed and disrupted their expectations. No one in that crowd ever phantomed that this Jesus would stand in front of every one of them and unapologetically say the very shocking things that he said this day. He looks at the crowd and says to them that, except ye eat of my flesh, and except ye drink of my blood, then you have no life in me, you have no part of me. And ladies and gentlemen, this is quite powerful because what we see before us is Jesus uh, very straightforwardly and unapologetically laying out the terms and the requirements for the relationship that he intends to have with us. And I think it's a, little, it's, a little, it's a little strange because it's always funny to me how when you begin to express what you require, how many people it begins to turn off. Uh, there are some people who are under the impression that they can have you, be with you, be attached to you, and it come with no cost. It come with no requirement. It does not demand any degree of sacrifice. And so Jesus says, before uh, I lead you on, thinking that you're getting into something that you're really not, or that you're having expectations that are not realistic, let me lay it on the line for you. If you do not eat of my flesh, and if you do not drink of my blood, then... You have no life in you. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, it is when you start outlining what you require in terms of any kind of relationship in your life that God would allow it to turn the wrong people off. As long as you are silent in terms of what you need and what, kind, what you desire, 
or who you desire to have or the type of people you desire to be around you, um, then he will let what you want turn the wrong people off. And I, I want to take a maybe five second praise break early because I'm glad that God allowed certain people to be turned off by me because I require too much. Uh, uh, sometimes you can take it very personally and think that they're turned off because I don't look good enough or I'm not good enough or I don't, I don't have enough of this. But sometimes God will let them be turned off simply because you are requiring too much out of them. And the moment you start requiring out of people um, the things you require, you are going to see some detachments. Because if you have not figured it out by now, people come and people go. But some people into our lives for some reasons that are quite necessary, even though I, I didn't necessarily understand it while life was happening in real time. But it's when you look back in retrospection and you see the departure and the detachment of people that you swore would always be a permanent fixture in your life uh, and then you spend countless time wondering, what did I do wrong? You did nothing wrong except begin to require more out of people if they were going to be attached to you. And, and uh, some people enter our lives for different reasons. Some people enter our lives for developmental purposes. Uh, as much as I hated it, uh, as much as it hurt when they left, when I look back over it and, and I survey that transaction, I have to admit that there are certain things and certain traits and certain things about me that God used them to develop and then they disappear. Your problem could be that you're trying to hold on to people uh, who were only sent for particular junctures or intervals in your life, and their sole purpose was to develop you. And not only do people come into your life for developmental purpose, but you must be careful because some people into our lives, because our distraction is their priority. That there are some people who try to impose themselves into your life. You didn't ask them. They come under that premise, you've been in church long enough to have heard people say, you know, God sent me to you. I don't know what it is about you. I was just sitting over there on the third row and my eyes locked with your eyes and the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm supposed to be a part of your life when the truth of the matter is there are people that will pray on your vulnerability and your desperation. And even though you think you're doing a great job at camouflaging it, there are predators that can see it and it sticks out like a sore thumb. And, and, and but they enter your life because your distraction is their priority. All you got to do is look at some of the people who left your life and then you look at the time that they spend in your life and ask yourself, um, why is it that I stopped dreaming as big as I was dreaming when they came around? Why is it that I, I all of a sudden stopped wanting as much as I wanted? Because there are some people that enter your life, not just for developmental purposes, but there are some people that come because distraction is their priority. And so you look over your life and you see how there are some people that God had to literally extract and, and evict out of your life because they were nothing more than distractions that were trying to detour you from your purpose. And not only are there some people that come into your lives, ladies and gentlemen, for developmental purposes and people come in because distracting you is their priority, but some people into your life to infuse self-doubt persistently. 
That is their, that's all they do. Every time you talk to them, they look for a moment, an opening to try to uh, infuse self-doubt. Do you really think you can do something like that? I don't know. I think you should really think about this a little longer. I mean, do you really think somebody like you coming from where you've come from, dealing with the things you've dealt with, having the kind of history and the kind of past that you have could do anything like that? And sometimes we, to our detriment, embrace people who uh, have a problem with us entertaining anything beyond what they think we are capable of. I need an usher right through there. Let me talk to somebody now. The problem is you're busy entertaining people and embracing people who have a problem because you're entertaining things that seem to be beyond you. And, uh, and, and you're wondering why they are no longer around your life. It is because that God has a way of allowing you and your vision and your desires to turn the wrong People off, Lord, I, I'm trying not to dance because I got to get through the rest of this, but I want to I want to take a moment and thank God for everybody. My 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 desires and my dreams turned off. And sometimes when you start requiring more, not just from people, but from you, it's going to cause people to start departing from your life. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you know what it feels like to have people just depart without explanation. They just exit. You will just look up and the relationship is non-existent. We didn't fight. We didn't argue. We just, without it being said, mutually agreed to move on. No ill will. I don't have nothing bad to say about you. You don't have anything to say, bad to say about me. It is just over. There was no altercation. They just leave your life. Could it be possible that you are crying over some stuff that God removed out of your life that would have been a permanent hindrance from you accomplishing your dream, acquiring so, certain goals in your life? Why is it that we have this detrimental self-destructive tendency to try to hold on to things and to people that are trying to walk away from us. We are so possessive that even when we see them trying to walk away, we do everything in our power to persuade them to stay. But sometimes, and I hope about 200 of you can get this, but sometimes you don't realize how you are helping others is destroy you by fighting for them. Lord, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I feel like somebody uh, in the D.C. area, God's getting ready to liberate you today because you got to get to the point where you look at everybody in your life and say you are a benefit, but you are not a necessity. I, I believe it was Fantasia that said, if you don't want me, then don't talk to me. Go ahead and free yourself. You hanging around is not doing me any favor if your ulterior motive motive is to disrupt my future. Lord, and uh, you, you must understand that anytime you try to hold on to things and the people that were never meant to be intricate or necessary or mandatory for the next phase of your future, you become undeservingly used. Oh, God. You, you're thinking that the more I contribute, then the more entitled I am to their commitment. The, the, the more I give of myself, then the more entitled I am. I am to their loyalty, but the truth of the matter is whoever is not designed for your future, God will allow your new requirements to turn them off. And before you look around, you will do like Jesus and start noticing people starting to walk away. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is up preaching his message. And as he's preaching, the synagogue is emptying out. <laughs> While he's preaching and telling them that except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, then, then you have no life in me. As a matter of fact, 
uh, they started looking around at each other, but they didn't understand that he was not talking carnally. He was talking spiritually. Let me tell you, sometimes God will cause a disruption in certain relationships because God understands that you are never going to be on the same frequency. The more you talk spiritually, the more they try to interpret and understand it carnally. And that's why you have this friction because you're not on the same frequency. God, deliver me from everybody around me at this season of my life. Remove all the friction because we are not on the same frequency. That's why the book says, how can two walk together except they be in agreement? You have the friction you're having because you're not on the same frequency. And the Bible says that they look around each other and said, this is a hard thing. The Bible says that while Jesus is teaching that they start walking away. I, I, I want to preach to people who are watching folk walk away. Uh, I want to preach to people who are watching people slowly distance themselves uh, but let, let me preach to you and let me give you this revelation that sometimes people are distancing themselves because they were never designed to go the distance with you. Your destiny is too far reaching. Your purpose is too great. And sometimes you don't have to dismiss them. They will start distancing themselves and how... How do I deal with people who are walking away? I wanted to know myself and I looked at Jesus as he's preaching. They're leaving and I noticed some things that I think would be beneficial to you as people are trying to walk away because while Jesus is preaching and they start walking away, I noticed, number one, he didn't chase them. <laughs> uh, he didn't chase them. Your problem is that you keep chasing after things that God's trying to loose and liberate out of your life. But because you have this unhealthy, addictive attachment to things that are not beneficial, you find yourself chasing after them. But, but I, I got a revelation a few years ago in my life and I made a promise to myself that I'm not going to chase you I'll just replace you. Oh my God, you, 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 you got a good place to shout right there. You ought to lay your hands on yourself and say, I ain't chasing them out. I'm, I'm just going to replace them because anybody that can walk out, let them walk. Anybody that can leave, let them leave. Jesus, watch them walk away and he does not chase them. Ladies and gentlemen, not only does he not chase them, he didn't chase them, but number two, watch this. He didn't compromise his stance on the criteria he needed for a functional relationship. Uh, he did not compromise the criteria that he set up for a functional relationship. In other words, Jesus told him up front, if you're going to rock with me, you got to eat of my flesh and you got to drink of my blood. But when people start leaving, he did not amend this criteria to get people to say, he didn't say, all right, okay, okay, you know what, never mind. Maybe just eat my flesh and don't drink the blood. Or, or, or better yet, maybe just drink the blood and, and, and don't eat of my flesh. Your problem is you keep trying to make amendments to accommodate people who are never going to be additions in your life. Oh, my God. Uh, you, your problem is what happens when people start walking away. Your mind tells you, well, I need to start compromising. Maybe I am too tough. May, 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 maybe I am uh, too picky and too peculiar. May, may, maybe my standards are too high. But I want to tell you that you cannot compromise the criteria on which is necessary for you to have a functional, healthy relationship with anybody in your life, a business partner, a church member. Uh, uh, intimate, whatever it is, he said, hey, if you can't deal with what I require, then that's the surest sign that I should not be desiring 
this relationship or this interaction. Ladies and gentlemen, when I looked at Jesus, as they are walking away, he did not chase them. He just said, I ain't going to chase you, I'll replace you. <laughs> he did not compromise his stance on what he needed for a healthy functional relationship. But, but then I saw something else. He didn't require your closure. Oh, God, help me preach to somebody. Sometimes it's your need of closure that keeps your wounds open. Uh, you, you, don't, you didn't know how important that was. Somebody ought to be tearing that living room up, that kitchen, wherever you are watching me from the day. Sometimes it is your need for closure that keeps the wounds open in your life. Sometimes you got to have so much concern for your mental stability that you say, I'm out, even if I don't get an apology. I don't need your explanation. I don't need to even need to hear uh, you embellish what happened and it went wrong. Sometimes your need for closure keeps the womb open. And as they walked away, Jesus didn't run behind them and say, hey, 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 I need a little closure. Don't just walk away. Don't just leave me. At least, at least tell me what happened. Sometimes it is your need. It is my need for closure that keeps the womb open. How many times in your life have you justified running behind people under the premise that you needed closure? No, you didn't need closure. You just feared being alone and you just feared starting over again and you just feared being embarrassed because look at you, you were with them, now you're not with them and you fear what people are going to say. But the truth of the matter is the critics are not the ones who've got to live in that situation. And the sooner you free yourself from the opinion of people the better off you are going to be and Jesus watches them walk away and he does not require any closure uh, not only did he not require any closure I saw something else in this text that blew my mind he didn't have another conversation about them they walked away and he never mentions them again. <laughs> uh, uh, they walked away and he never even brings it up. The problem is, ladies and gentlemen, you keep people relevant in your mind by keep replaying their memories and keep talking about them out of your mouth. The only way they're relevant is because you keep them in your mind and you keep replaying the memories and rehearsing the matter when the truth of the matter is you got to decide that when they walk away, I'm not having another conversation about them. That is unproductive energy. That is energy I could be using on my strategy and I'm not going to keep rehearsing who did not stay because you are no longer worth my energy, time, effort, or conversation and your problem is you keep having conversations when God says that chapter is in there. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I feel strongly that there's somebody that's watching me right now. The moment you stop having the conversation, there's getting ready to be a significant level of clarity in your life so that you can see that that one stop, that one bump, that injury, that hurt, that breakup, that detachment in your life does not define the rest of your life. You still have more quality life left to live. Let me preach to you while I'm at it. You still got more life left to live. You still got more smiles left to smile. You still got more checks left to cash, but you gotta be careful when they walk away. Stop having, Jesus watched them walk away and I don't see anywhere in the text where he ever mentions them again, ladies and gentlemen. It was mind-blowing to me, Jesus teaching in the synagogue. And every few minutes, people were walking out the door because of what he was requiring out of them. Said that if you're going to run with me, this is the stipulation. Your problem is you keep giving people all access passes to your life without any requirement, any responsibility 
or any stipulation, but the moment you deserve, you come to the realization of what you deserve and what you should be requiring out of people, you will find yourself like Jesus and watch them walking away from you. What do you do when they're walking away? Jesus did not chase them. He does not compromise his stance of the criteria for the healthy relationship he wanted. He does not require closure. He didn't have another conversation about them, but watch this. He didn't cry over them. <laughs> oh my God, there's somebody watching me now. You like I, can you imagine how much healthier and how better of a headspace you could be in right now if you would not have wasted so much emotional energy on people who were never worth it in the beginning. And sometimes what Jesus taught us was you can't take it personal, you got to take it as purposeful. Ah, uh, God, you missed the place to shout right there. You got to stop crying over everything. Some stuff you got to look at and say, you know what? It ain't personal that they left. It was purposeful that they left. God would not allow anybody that was not necessary for your future development to hold a place in your life any longer and say, you know what? Some people walk up to and say, you know, you know, I can't hang around any longer. You know, I think it's my time to move on. Your best course of action from now on is say, you know what? I don't even take it personal. It was purposeful that you leave when you're leaving, that you do it when you are doing it because my destiny is too powerful to be strung out, having emotional fits over people who never were intended to fit into the future that I have. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you that they will walk away from you, but you can't feel like you are a failure and you can't allow it to affect your esteem and to get you so emotionally disruptive that you don't, that you don't go after the things that you desire. The truth of the matter is there are some people that will leave you because they can't be content with you. Now, let me give you this and I'm going to close, but I want to tell you they will never be content because your capacity intimidates them. People who are intimidated by where you are going will never have the right motive for staying. Oh my God. Uh, I, I want to talk to you and tell you that there are people that are walking away from you now, but the Lord told me to tell you, tell them, go ahead and walk. We're good. <laughs> uh, go, go ahead and walk, we're good I, I'm, I'm not chasing you I'm not having another conversation about you I'm not going to compromise my stance And I'm not crying over you Go ahead and walk I promise you We're good Because the moment you decide it's not, per it's not personal That it's purposeful it will change your perspective of your entire life. Stretch your hands toward me because I got to pray for you. You found yourself questioning yourself. Why? Looks like everybody's leaving me. Could it be possible that it's just God, God sent out a mass eviction to everybody in your life that would not contribute to your elevation? Could it be possible that God is sending out a mass eviction to the people who are not authentic. Oh, they smile a little bit when you do something, but they're not happy for what it is you're doing. But you gotta decide this day, hey, go ahead and walk. We're good, I promise you, we're good. I have no animosity. I have no order against you. It was not personal. It was purposeful. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I speak to every person. Started feeling low, feeling, feeling like a failure internally because people keep walking away from them. No matter what you do, hear me. If you're not what they want, you can never hold on to them. No matter what you contribute, no matter what you give, no matter how much support you give, if it was not God-ordained, it's going to ultimately collapse. 
But when they walk away, you can't. Just because they walk out does not mean your life has to fall apart. And you cannot stop requiring what you require. Just to make room for people who add no value to your life. So Father, every individual that has heard this word right now, I pray that it shifts things drastically in their perception. And that they are free enough in their spirit to tell them, hey, go ahead and walk. We're good. I promise you. We're good. I have nothing against you. So, Father, I free them in your name. And even though others have walked away, they will yet walk in their purpose and walk through the open doors and walk on the stages and walk on the platforms that you, are pre you have preordained for their life. And it is done in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, my brother and my sister, there is no better moment, no better day than right now to give your life and your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. For he died that we might have life, and not just any kind of life, but that we would have life more abundantly. Just because you're, you have a pulse doesn't mean you're living. That means you're existing. Real life happens when you receive Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life. And that's what I'm offering you today the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ. If you're watching and you, you have a sense in your heart and your spirit that today is the day, now is the time that the Lord has spoken to your heart, telling you it's time for you to surrender and submit to his will. There's some contact information right here at the screen. I want you to send us your information now. Don't delay, don't procrastinate. I've got staff on standby right now uh, that are ready to respond to you. Uh, maybe you are backsliding, you walked away and you've been convinced that uh, maybe there's nothing else God can do with you. I want to tell you, you couldn't be further from the truth. God is in the business of restoring, washing, cleaning us up and uh, using us for his glory. So I want you this day to know that you are not outside of the reach of God's possibility. God still has a plan for you. Or maybe you're watching and say, the Lord spoke to me and I'm supposed to be in connection with this ministry. Uh, I am to be a partner with this ministry. It uh, doesn't matter what city, state, coast, continent you're on. Uh, you can be connected uh, just as much virtually as you would here in the local area. Uh, so again, the contact information is here. I'm waiting to hear from you, from you. I'm praying for you, and I'm excited about what God's getting ready to do in this next season of your life. Well, let's prepare our hearts, everybody, as we are getting ready to put seed in the ground. That's exciting news for those of us who are believers, who understand the principles of prosperity. And no matter how much we dance and shout, until we put seed in the ground, uh, then the ground is not obligated to yield any harvest or yield any fruit. The Bible says that God will cause the earth to yield fruit on your behalf when we put the seed in the ground by faith. And I want you today to begin to prepare your heart and prepare your seed as we are ready to make our kingdom investment. Uh, first of all, those of you who are uh, preparing to release the Lord's tithe on this day, I want you to do that. Tithe is simply a tenth of every single thing that our great God allows to come into your hand. Tithing is not limited to a paycheck or a pay period. It's every time somebody blesses you, uh, then you honor God by giving him the 10th part, setting it apart as holy unto him. So I want you to do that now. All the giving means are right here on your screen at the bottom. Choose the one that is the most convenient for you and you're going to see the heavens literally open upon your light. Now, I need at least a hundred of you that would do something for me. For some, it may be a stretch. Others, it already witnesses in your spirit. God has already prompted you to do so, or he's prompted you to be in position that whenever the prophet would ask for it, you would have it in your possession. I need at least a hundred persons that would just simply sow a $70 offering right now. No delay, no contemplating, second guessing about it. I want you to obey my voice and I want you to move and respond to it. 
So go now and do that. Uh, and I believe there are persons that are watching that, that are going to do more than that. That God has already told you to do it. Uh, so you had better obey God. Uh, those of you who don't have that $70 C, those who are committed to our corporate level of giving, which is that $42 C, I want you to remain vigilant and diligent in that. And as you do so, God's going to increase you in increments and it's going to blow your mind. And those of you watching say, Bishop, I don't have that 70 or that $42 giving level, uh, but I will commit to giving the very best seed that I can on this day. I want you to do that. God's going to bless you, no question about it. All the giving means are right here. Those of you who uh, want to send in checks or money orders, uh, the mailing address is right here at the bottom of your screen. Get a stamp and an envelope, seal it. We're going to pray over it and pronounce heaven's blessing upon your life. When you give, there is absolutely nothing off limits for a child of God. God's going to bless you in a supernatural way. Keep on giving. God's going to keep on blessing. Well, as always, time really goes way too quickly. Uh, but I, I certainly hope that you have enjoyed yourself in the Lord this day. Uh, I got six words for you. And that, that's what I'm going to shout about the rest of this week. Go ahead and walk. We're good. I hope this word is registered and resonated in your heart and your spirit. And I want you to walk in victory the remaining days of this week. I want you to know that God has plans to prosper you and uh, bless you in a ridiculous manner. Don't forget to stay connected with me on all of the social media platforms. They're right there for you. I say it all the time. There is absolutely a blessing in connection. And I'm out of time for now, but always remember, as I always say in parting, that things can change for you at any moment. I'll see you next time.